she asleep? Yes, fast asleep. How do you feel about it now that we're on our way? Are you right, Dad? Certain? I am now. I suppose I was just keeping her in San Francisco, hoping against hope that one day the doctors would come up with some miraculous cure. Oh, she'll love your ranch. She'll be happy there. I've got to face it, Dad. That's all we can do for her now. You'll have to wait here a while. You better park right over there. Those are your instructions. What's going on? You got yourself a front seat to something you're not going to forget so quick. See that hill? You'll see it light up like you never saw light before. Any minute now, they're going to test an atomic bomb. Dad, let's turn back. Wouldn't get very far. Ought to go off any minute now. But what about Vivian? She'll be terrified. It'll be just like fireworks for her. She doesn't know what it means. We'll be the ones who'll be frightened. Can you ride? No, Grandpa, but I can try. Well, you go on, then. No, I still can't believe it. Every time she smiles at me, I think... Well, it's just impossible. The days after the doctor told me the diagnosis, I was certain he'd called back to say he'd made a mistake, but... Touch him gently with your heel. How long before she'll have to stay in bed? He couldn't say exactly. But in a few months, she'll be too weak to get out. Mr. Vernon? Yes? My name is Ashley. Hello. I came down to see you last week, but they told me you were in San Francisco. That's right. What can I do for you, Mr. Ashley? I wonder if you'd be interested in selling your ranch. I'm afraid you came at the wrong time. This place is giving a deal of pleasure to a little girl, and at this moment, I wouldn't dream of giving it up. Well, it isn't a matter of giving immediate possession. We have options on the land from here all the way down to the river. But we would like a hold on your place, in case of possible expansion later on. Expansion for what? Oh, I thought you knew. The whole town's talking of it. Well, I just got in an hour ago. Oh, I see. Well, I work for the Atomic Energy Commission. They're going to build a plant here. Grandpa, am I doing all right? Just fine. In three months, this place will be a boom town. Sure, there'll be problems. But there'll be advantages for every one of us. How much is your place worth right now? About 4000 Well, in six months, I'll be able to get you 12 for it. Maybe 15, if he wants to sell. I won't be going to sell. It's my home, Harry. It's where I was born and raised. It's where my folks settled when they come out here in covered wagons. And they looked all over before they picked this as the best spot. Well, maybe it won't help you so much, but things haven't been too good here for two or three years. Plenty of people in town that could use a little more money. 
Harry can tell you about that, can't you, Harry? I'm afraid I can. You don't run a bank without knowing the problems people have. All of us have. Money-wise, I mean. And money is what the plant's going to bring to this town. Of course, I'm not saying that money means happiness. But it's a lot easier when you're not pinching and skimping and worrying year after year. So it's just a question of money. Oh, there's more to it than that. Now, you fellows got me elected mayor, and I know what this town needs and how much it needs. A new school building, for one thing. And, doctor, how far is it to the nearest hospital? 26 miles. And a decent water system wouldn't hurt. Looks like we got along without him so far. But is that any reason why our children should have to? That's why I'm glad the plant is coming here. It'll mean the best schools and hospitals and things like that. Sure, I'll hate to see the old town change, just like anybody else, but I'm darn sure it'll be worth it. Seems to me you're all ducking the real point. Now, what's this plant going to make? Fish and more material, they call it. Eh, no matter what they call it, it all adds up to one thing. The atomic bomb. And that's why this whole idea makes me sick. There won't be any danger around the plant. Everything will be carefully controlled. That's not the point. I was at Hiroshima, Doc. Maybe eight or nine days after the bomb was dropped. I saw what was left. So they're going to make the atomic bomb here. Well, I'm selling my place and leaving town. I don't want any part of it. I can understand how he feels. After that kind of an experience, naturally he's afraid of the whole idea of the bomb. Let us be honest, we're all afraid. We're all terrified, and so are people all over the world. But the fact of the matter is, the bomb is here. Now that it's been invented, we just can't stick our heads in the sand and pretend that it doesn't exist. And say what you like about it. Having the bomb is pretty good insurance against an attack by an aggressor. John, you've been very quiet. How do you feel about this? Well, I was listening. I only heard the news about an hour ago, and I don't like to make up my mind in a hurry. Have you made it up now? Yes, I think I have. I agree with a lot you fellas have been talking about. But the bomb's been invented, and there's nothing we can do about that. The point is, do we want it here? Harry says the plant will bring money into the town. Well, that's fine, of course. And we can all use a little more money. I know I can. Farrell says it'll give us new schools and a hospital and so on. But where will all this come from? From the atomic bomb. And the atomic bomb, no matter how thin you slice it, is simply a machine for killing people. Yeah. My folks came here about the same time yours did, Tim. That's right. Maybe today it isn't as big a town as they dreamed it would be. It probably isn't as rich a town. All we did was grow our crops and raise our cattle. But at least we never tried to make any money out of other people's unhappiness. No. Some of you are worrying that the town will change. I'm worrying about the people who live in this town. What sort of people we will be after we grow rich on the atomic bomb. With our schools and hospitals that we know one day will have to be paid for with other people's lives. Yeah. That's the change I'm worrying about. I don't think it's worth it. Mostly what you read about, I grant you that. It's mostly what it's been used for so far. That's the tragedy of nuclear energy. But it had to begin at Hiroshima. No wonder the world is confused. Many of us are afraid. So far in this film, you've seen demonstrations of atomic energy at work as a force for good in industry and agriculture. Now we go on to a more dramatic use of this God-given force. This girl is suffering from one of mankind's most dread diseases, cancer. She has cancer of the thyroid gland. A few years ago, this would have meant her case was hopeless. Now she has a chance. That glass looks like it has plain water in it, but actually it contains hope. Hope in the form of a radioactive iodine solution. Now, most people know that iodine is used in treating thyroid, but let's explain where this radioactive business comes in. Here we see the young lady on the examination table. Suppose, instead of the radioactive solution, she'd swallowed a tiny wristwatch. Then, if you could listen closely enough, you could hear a ticking in her throat. In the same way, 
A little bit of atomic energy in the solution she drank is now sending out signals from her throat. These signals are being picked up by the apparatus suspended over her neck, and so provide a new and tremendously valuable guide to the doctor in his efforts to help the girl. Now take a look at this instrument. It doesn't seem very interesting, but believe it or not, you're seeing a bunch of atoms drawing their own picture. Every tick of a radioactive atom causes a pin in the instrument to jiggle as it passes over the chart. Let's see it in action. This gentleman may have cancer of the thyroid gland. He's drinking the same kind of iodine solution the young lady drank. And just as it did in her case, the iodine concentrates in the cancer tissue. Then the atoms go to work and draw their own picture. And so the doctor has a record of the exact location of the cancer which he could obtain in no other way. Another use of atomic energy as a tracer is in brain surgery. The work is being done in the use of radiophosphorus for the detection and exact location of brain tumors. And the accuracy of the information that this new method supplies is leading to revolutionary results. Already several cases of brain tumor, hitherto considered hopeless, have been successfully operated on with the aid of this great new tool of medicine. Medical research is just one of the many uses of atomic energy as a benefit. Before we review the other beneficial uses, let's look at the many places in America where for many years thousands have worked in the field of atomic energy. Well, you've given us plenty to think about. Of course, it's mainly in the future. Don't you want to contribute to the future? Now you're needling me about the resolution. Of course I am. That's what I'm here for. Good night, Congressman. Radio phosphorus is a tracer. Tell me more about that. Well, there's a surgeon in Boston using it with some kind of a Geiger counter to locate the exact spot of the brain tumor. Mm. Has it been successful? Of course, it's all very new, but he's already had results in cases that seem to be hopeless. Mr. Vernon, do you have some personal interest in this? Yes, my grandchild. The little girl you saw this afternoon. She's dying of a brain tumor. Do you have this surgeon's address? Sure. Of course, you realize it's only a chance. I know. But this morning, there was no chance at all. You've got to make up your own minds on the whole picture. But I've got this to say. Because of atomic research, there's a chance now for my granddaughter. And what's even more important is a better chance for children like her in the future. That is, if we don't put obstacles in the way of atomic research. Energy, because I thought it was the work of the devil. Now I know I was wrong. You see, God made the atom. You've seen a little of the good it can bring, and its promise for the future of the world. That's how high the stakes are, for good or for evil. But this time, God has entrusted us with a physical force bigger than we've ever had before. One that can destroy us or can lead us on to new horizons.